Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson, and I am so excited to be sharing some teaching with you from the Word of God on renewing our minds in these final moments of the end of days. I, from the comments that some of you make, I know you're struggling. I know you're struggling. And I want to give you some helpful tips, practical things that you can do to renew your mind in these final moments of the end of days as we want to be effective for the kingdom and spreading the gospel. Amen? We Now, I always say we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, lest anyone should boast. We are, boast. We are not saved by works. We are not kept by works. We are, however, saved for works. Praise God. And we want to do that. We want those things to flow from our life. Most of all, we want to love the Lord our God with every fiber of our being, love our neighbors as ourselves, and we need to love ourselves too. And know that Romans 8, 1 applies. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, before I get into this, I am so humbled and so blessed for those of you, without my asking, have sent donations in to the church. And that leads me to another thing. And, and thank you so much. Now, please know I've spoken with an accountant and with a, not with an attorney, but with a paralegal at my attorney's office because I don't want to do anything wrong here. I actually, YouTube was very kind to me. I didn't uh, get into serious trouble, but I had on one of the videos, I was playing a Tasha Cobb song. I was, you know, I worship and I didn't think anything of it because I was live streaming and I can't do that because that was copyrighted. So I took that video down and redid that video without the music. So I will keep it without the music because we want to obey the laws of the land. We want to honor those rules. I do know that some of you tell me you do not get notified when I put up videos. So I recommend that you check daily, maybe a couple times a day. I do ask you if you're watching and you are blessed by it to subscribe and hit the bell and then share it. Now, I also want you to know that you have my express permission to use these videos. Send it wherever you want. I don't care. You use it. Use the content. You can do your own video with my content. You have my express permission to do that. I also know that God is doing something. The Holy Spirit is doing something with this as a ministry. So, since I refuse to be aligned and set up a 501c3. Please understand this. I have now a couple things. One, if you give to the church, you can do that, and that's appreciated, and it's a blessing. That will go into the general fund of the church, and that will be administered by the leaders of the church that do that. Not one penny will go to this channel. So when I speak of that, I have... Now, more and more, we have need for more people to help me because as <laughs> you guys know this, as a pastor, I have a full schedule. And so I started out with the intent of getting the truth out there. Praise God, as Holy Spirit led me to do. Obviously, I didn't worry about the quality of it. I was more concerned with the content We've had some funny moments together, even with the hat I wore. I didn't even realize. I grabbed it from the closet. I'm not even sure which of my kids it was. And it had what looked like the braids. One of you made a funny comment and said it looked like um, the the Jewish curls, the Orthodox <laughs> or city curls. And I got a good laugh out of that. Some of you said, oh, cool beard with the braids. And even uh, Diane Walton, if you're watching this, I'm going to call you out on this. I love you. She's a dear sister in our church. She um she made comments about my my beautiful braids and so did her husband. Now, I have been given recommendations as to equipment, as to lighting, as to all these things. I don't do any of that. I just do the videos. But as you guys give, it will be poured back into this channel. So what do I mean by that? Just the other day, our church secretary told me it was either 26 or 27 calls that came in. I can't keep up with my Facebook messengers, and I do encourage you to, to, to go follow my Facebook. I put scriptures up there. The, the Holy Spirit just leads me, and I'll put scriptures, and I also have a pastor friend who shares scriptures with me that I often put up. 
Rick O'Neill, if you're hearing this, I love you and appreciate you. And I, and I share those things. Praise God. And, and I give full uh, credit to my friend who gives that to me. And then I'm inspired to put some things up. What you're going to see on my Facebook are typically pictures of my grandchildren or my pets, my dogs and my cats, and scripture. You're going to see a lot of scripture. So I hope that that encourages you. And of course, the word of God is alive and active. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that. Sharper than a double-edged sword, it pierces between joint and marrow, between soul and spirit, and is, is a discerner and judge of the intentions and motives of the heart. Praise God. So it's alive, and God's word will not return void. So a couple things. I must because I will not be 501c3, and because I'm not actually setting up an LLC uh, corporation, definitely not a not-for-profit. So don't anybody say I'm a prophet, because not, I'm not a not-for-profit. Um, and, and somebody had shared a video with me, Amir, and he says that, and I thought that was really funny. Although he is a not-for-profit. I'm not, actually. So I guess you could claim I would be a prophet, but I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just a watchman who applies 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. However, I have been praying. So, I am free legally to receive donations. I will be taxed on that personally since I am a not-for-profit. So, I'm going to have an accountant look at that stuff. And then... That will enable us to get equipment. That will enable us. I've already set up a separate email just for this channel. It is in the description. It will be in the description here. Harpazzo soon. Do you like that? Harpazzo soon at gmail.com. I am going to give a couple other people that are close to me and I will pay them. And I've already determined. Uh, that it will be, it's not a lot of money, but I think $10 an hour is, is, um, is good for now because it's also a ministry. And if anyone wants to volunteer, I will look at that too. You know, any, any ministry, if you will, but I can't technically say this is a ministry. It is separate from the church. We're not going to, I was highly recommended not, and I had already felt that in spirit, not to combine the two, even though when I preach here, it's YouTube Live. The reality is, if I preached in New York, which I've done at a friend's church, then that would be YouTube Live. If I preach in Israel, that will be YouTube Live. If I preach, I've preached in Portugal and Spain and, oh, Rome, Italy. Praise God. That was a few years ago. What? The altars were full. People were healed. In fact, I had an interpreter. I got to share this testimony. A woman came up. I'll never forget this. And, you know, in... in I, for my Italian friends, you'll know this. Some of the churches, the ladies still wear the veils and the men in some of them and the women, actually a lot of them sit on separate sides. Well, I was at a big tent. It was better than a tent, but because the building permits they had, and it was in Rome and the, the women could sit with their husbands and people could sit, but they, they told me, you know, you don't touch the ladies. Here in the, in the United States, I can, you know, I mean, lay hands, I can, you know, anoint someone with oil. I can put my hand on their shoulder, whatever. I was, I was told, don't do that there. One, the altars were full. And I looked and Alfredo, my interpreter, who I just loved, I, I, I said, Alfredo, she's got a malignant tumor in her abdomen area and God's going to heal her. The Lord spoke to me. Her husband grabbed my hand and placed it over her abdomen and told Alfredo to tell me, pray, and the report came back. The tumor was gone, praise God. The cancer was gone. It was just a fantastic service. The Holy Spirit moved in a mighty way. But anyway, I share that to tell you, I've preached in other places, and my church is really good about me going places and preaching. And when I do, those videos will follow. And so I have to keep that separate from the church, and I will, because I am adamant. The Lord has spoken to me. I am not to be 501c3. So every penny that will come in to support this channel and the ministries that I'm going to outline right now will not, you will not get a, a tax 
you, you know, a deduction. You will not get a deduction for that. You will not get a letter that says you donated this much and you can, you know, use that as a tax write-off. And I don't know how it is in every other country, but in the United States, the 501c3, the tax exempt, uh, the not-for-profits or the churches, people give and they get to write that off as a deduction on their taxes. That is not the case. Also, any money that comes in, because it's coming in, I set it up like a store, J Creek Country Store, because there may be things that I can get at cost that I will let you know what that is. Based on some of the comments, uh, I can hopefully get wholesale, but I'll, I'll pay taxes on everything I purchase. But like The Authority of the Believer by Dr. Billy Brim, I would love to get a bunch of those and be able to get those out to those who want it, that they email in about that. They are fantastic. And by ordering it in bulk, we can get a great discount so that it's just the cost of postage. And, and that's all I would ask for, for those kind of things. So as I'm praying, and I told you, just give me a couple days as I'm praying. So we already have an email. Some of you, I, I want to tell you, I'm really excited about this. Some of you are going to help with this ministry. And I, I can't remember everybody's names right now, but I'm getting to know many of you, like Marlene, like Dee Dee, like Richard, like Lily like JC, like Susan, like Sue. There's so many of you. I, I can't remember all your names off the top of my head. Uh, Patty, you guys have blessed me. Nathan, uh, Greg Jackson, right? My, my brother um, from a different mother, praise God, and different father. But you know what I'm saying. We have the same Heavenly Father. But um, just love you guys already. You encouraged me. And I am so blessed by the way I see you praying for others and answering biblical questions. So, as we have this email, and you can write in, I will be scrolling to look for those names. I will have to have other people help me. Again, just from the messenger, the calls to the church, those kinds of things, we need to separate this out. So some of you, I will share my contact information with, and we will have conversations and you pray and let the Holy Spirit lead you. And I see you guys being part of this. And, and so pray about that if the Lord leads you. Certainly it will be limited because I'm not just going to let anybody do that. We really need to get to know each other. I need to have faith and hear from the Lord that those people that are assigned those duties are biblically sound. And that we are in one accord when it comes to the teaching. So... I'm excited about that. <clears throat> I'm excited about the people that help me with the tech, better equipment, and getting the gospel out there and letting people know. Now, we could be going anytime, but until then, we're going to occupy and redeem the time. So whatever it becomes, I also want to say we will not be established as a church um, because I'm not going to set up that not for profit and establish that however for fun if you guys you know you can come up with names of you know this channel is under my name tim henderson but you can come up with a name that we can kind of call our our internet fellowship if you'd like if, if you guys would like to do that pray about it come up with some suggestions and then we'll i'll kind of do a vote you know we'll narrow it down to a few as we pray and then we'll come up and we'll start using that i really believe that the lord is using this to encourage one another to, to fulfill his purpose for the body of christ you know it's not about castles and what i mean is it's not about individual churches it's, it's not about building castles. It's about building the kingdom of God. And right now, we need to be about our Father's business. We need to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Unadulterated truth of the Word of God. Not, not this tickling the ears and cotton candy, but really getting into the Word of God. We need to love one another and build one another up in the faith, and we need to reach out to a lost and dying world. So I know I went on a little bit about that, but I wanted to explain to you what's happening. Um, so you can already start reaching out by email, harpazosoon at gmail.com. It's already set up. There's already a donate button on this channel and, and a link that you can go to. And so not asking you to, but however the Lord leads you, that will go into expanding 
what I call this ministry, but with it out without it being set up and attached to that government not-for-profit. We are not going to be hindered by this world system regarding this channel. And so we're just trusting God and whatever it becomes, it becomes. And for all we know, I did a video earlier. Woo! Glory to God! We're going to be out of here soon and none of this is going to matter. But until then, we will occupy and redeem the time. Now, I know that some may say, well, what about missions? What about helping those in need? You know what, you guys, you pray about that. I am so open to that. Again, this will not, the, I will be taxed for everything that comes in. I'm okay with that, but that will be adjusted out because it's going to need to cover that because I, again, we will not be a not-for-profit. I have my reasons, and the number one reason is because the Lord has told me not to, and I need to keep this, as this grows, separate for legal reasons and all kinds of things. So praise God. But anyway, let's get into the word. I'm sorry if I took too long with that, but because some of you have already given without anything being set up, and, and I just am overwhelmed by that, that's going to the work of the Lord. Not one penny of that is coming to me. I just want you to know that. That's all going to the work of the Lord. Um, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You... You guys, God's blessing on you. So renewing our minds in the final in these final moments of the end of days. Now I've referenced 1 Corinthians 3:32 before. It says, Give no offense to the Jews, nor the Gentiles, nor the church, or the body of Christ. In the Old Testament, you had two people groups. You had the Jews and you had the nations, or what we call the Gentiles, and some in the New Testament, you know, referred to as the Greeks because the world had been Hellenized then. But it's the nations, the Gentiles. And the church is actually a hidden mystery in the Old Testament. God knew what he was going to establish by Jesus' atoning work on the cross. So the church is made up of all Jews and Gentiles who have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Saved by grace through faith. Praise God. Now, it's important to understand that because all of the Bible is for the believer, but not all of the Bible is about the believer. And some of you have done a really good job, and some of you have even challenged me on some of those areas, and I've gone back and looked, and I'm still standing on my position. However, I, I love, I love that you guys are thinking that way, and I truly welcome, you know, this isn't about one man. This is not about one person. This channel is dedicated to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to sounding the alarm as a watchman and, and getting the gospel out there. So I want to go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. May the very God of peace sanctify you completely. And I pray to God that your whole spirit, soul, and body, here we go, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I've shared this before. We are triune beings. We serve an eternally self-existing an eternally self-existing God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I have a body which is made up of my flesh, bone, and blood. I have a soul where my mind, will, and emotions are. And I have a spirit. And that spirit is what was born again, where the Holy Spirit did the regenerating work, where I understand the will of God as the spirit illuminates the word as I study it and reveals those mysteries and teaches me. That's right, the Holy Spirit teaches us. It doesn't mean that I don't study the culture and the times and the history and the context and look to other sources, but I am taught by Holy Spirit. He illuminates that word to us. Some people use that as justification to go off the path. So you've got to know, and we go back to the word by two or three places in the word, you know, witnesses to the word. That's what we want. But anyway, it talks about the soul, spirit, and the body. Now, when we are born again, when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, that we're, right, we refer to ourselves sinners saved by grace. 
But that old nature, that old person, that old me is dead. I'm now a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm alive in Christ. In fact, we are not saved by being water baptized. We are not saved by being baptized in the Holy Spirit. We are saved, and we do have Holy Spirit. Every born-again believer, when you're saved, your body becomes a temple of Holy Spirit. And so, when we're saved, we become a new creature. However, what he's saying here, what Paul is saying is, and I pray to God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. So after we're born again, we become a new creature. That's our spirit. But you know what? Our soul and our body or our, our mind and our body, because our soul is where our mind, will, and emotions are, that makes us uniquely us. There, while we're born again, our bodies may still right, bear the resemblance of, of that old man, right? And our minds can remember those old things, and the enemy will try to use that against us. Now, we're going to go to, I'm going to go to Romans. Hold on a second while I go to Romans. Okay, Romans 12. I urge you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, that means set apart, and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by, listen to this, the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so we present our bodies. Now, we're, not, we're already saved. We're born again. But now, because we are born again, and we have this love relationship with Jesus Christ, now we want to present our bodies as set apart, holy, in worship to him, and renew our minds. How are we going to do that? Well, 1 Peter 2.2 says, As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. I'm going to say that again. As newborn babies, born again, born of the Spirit, desire the, the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. It's all about what we're putting in. So when you think of a newborn baby, a baby is on the milk. It doesn't go to the food and the meat, right? A child progresses steadily. They're already our children, but they're being nourished and nurtured on healthy, uh, hopefully, on healthy and nutritious milk, and then as they're ready for the food. They're our children. You're born again. It matters what you feed into your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and your body. It matters. It matters if you're watching movies that you shouldn't, if you're listening or telling dirty jokes that you shouldn't, if you're looking at pornography or images that, that feed the carnal nature. It matters. We need to feed ourselves on the Word of God as 2 Peter 2, 2 says, desire the sincere milk of the word were washed in the purity of the truth of God's word that ye may grow thereby. So we are completely, when we're born again, we are redeemed, hallelujah. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to us because he became sin for us, right? He paid that debt on the cross of Calvary. Now, that righteousness, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 5.21. We want to continue to grow in the knowledge and admonition of the Lord. As, you know, the Bible says, 
Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Well, it's the same for the newborn babes in Christ. That's why we not only want to see people get saved, we want to see them disciple. Now, for some of you, you keep struggling with these things, and I see the comments, and I want to ask you, what are you feeding yourself? I, I really want you to think about this. I'm not condemning you. I, I truly love you. I love you, and I'm going to see all my brothers and sisters renewed in their mind. I want to see them feasting on the word of God. You know, in, in Spanish, we call it the pan de vida, the bread of life. Amen. So when you're feeding on the word of God, when you're fellowshipping with other believers, that's why I believe what we're doing here is so important. When you're praying for one another, encouraging one another, praise God, we build one another up in the faith. Listen, the Bible tells us that our days are limited and they're going to be full of trouble. Psalm 34, 19 says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. Praise God. All, all, brothers and sisters, praise God. And now, when we feast on the word, when we spend time in the word, I encourage you. People say, well, how much time should I spend? I encourage you to spend an hour a day in the word. I encourage you to spend at least an hour a day in prayer. I know that seems like a lot. And, and if you don't spend any time in prayer, but a quick, hello, good morning, Lord, and a good night, Lord, thank you that I'm alive. I want to encourage you, stretch that out to 15 minutes. If you can only do 10, do 10. It's, and over time, you increase that. Get into the Word. If you're not in the Word every day, I encourage you to get into the Word. This is why we have this channel. To share these truths with you and to be a watchman and let you know how much God loves you. So, brothers and sisters, if you want to... Now, there's also strongholds. Strongholds are lies that work against the plans and purpose and the truth of God for your life. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal that. Be in the word, be in the word and be in prayer. And honestly, I'm just going to be real with you. You know, I've said this with the youth group and through the years, it's been a, <laughs> it's been like 40 years that I've been working with youth groups. So I've said this for a long time. Youth will get in trouble or they'll, they'll fornicate or some have gotten pregnant through the years and they'll say to me, well, it was an accident. And I'll say, really? Were you jogging naked to your mailboxes and you collided? That would be an accident. It's not an accident. Where did it happen? Well, in the back of the car. Where does it always happen? Well, in the back of the car. Where does it happen? Well, when mom and dad are out, we always go to my bedroom and they're out three nights a week. Don't go to the bedroom. Don't go to the back of the car. Don't go on that date at night when you know it's doing. Don't go out alone unless you, if you need a chaperone, you have a chaperone. I, I tell, I hope this doesn't offend you, but I tell the youth, kissing, you know, the mouth is the most, is very sensitive. Kissing is an upper persuasion for lower invasion. And I know that sounds crass, but, you know, to try to keep it as clean as possible, the youth get it. They engage at younger and younger ages. And the reality is it's not just the youth. I'm talking to all of us. So some of you will say, Pastor Tim, I struggle with pornography. Pastor Tim, I struggle with fornication. Listen, God loves you. You're saved. You have believed on Jesus. Praise God. Your past, present, and future sins are were paid for. Praise God. Praise God. And I do not condemn you. I love you. I love you. You know what? Your sin is no worse than when I get angry at someone. Or when I know that I'm speeding and I shouldn't be. Do you hear what I'm saying? Sin is sin is sin. And I, for one, am very thankful for the blood of Jesus that paid the debt for my sin. I'm not condemning you, my brothers and sisters, but I'm telling you. The Bible says flee, right? flee temptation. Resist the devil. Flee. You can't be fornicating when you're fleeing. You can't be watching pornography when you're fleeing. It's time for some of us to flee and run to the Word of God and run to the presence of God and renew your mind. I've given this tip before for like smokers. Pastor Tim, I want to quit. And I get it. I get the addiction. I've never smoked, but I understand what, you know, food, food can be an addiction. 
I'm in that time where I want, need to lose like 12 pounds and I'm going to do it. Praise God. I want to glorify God with my body. Gluttony is a sin. Praise God for the blood of the lamb. <clears throat> Say, <coughs> I did it today. I literally picked up a donut after lunch. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> I literally picked up a donut after lunch and I was about to bite it and I caught myself and I said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, I put that donut down and did not bite it because I had, I had prayed. I said, Lord, now I know my sins are forgiven. Lord, I'm sorry that I've been overeating, that I let myself put on that extra weight. I want to glorify you with my body. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Listen, <clears throat> when I when I do something that offends my wife, I apologize for it. I freely speak to my Lord in praising him, worshiping him, interceding, asking for things that are needed, and saying, Lord, I'm sorry when I do. Not because I'm not saved, but because I love him. And because I'm acknowledging it and saying, Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to help me and quicken me. And he did today. I know that may sound silly to you, but for some of the smokers, I've said, say that. Well, we have a woman in our church who did that. And she, now I think it's five or six months, praise God, smoke free. Praise God. So listen, this works. So it is that song that we sang as children. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Be careful. Why? Because it's for our benefit. It's for his glory and for our good. You are saved, sealed, and sanctified if you believe on Jesus. This is about walking it out. We're already, again, I go back to, we are already a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, we are the ones who press in, right? As the, as the scripture says, and we set our bodies aside. We do that. We're not saved by that. We do it because we love him. And we renew our minds. So those old habits, those old things that you did, that you're remembering, that become the norm for you to go back to. It's kind of like abused children will go back to the abusive parent. That doesn't make sense, does it? But they do it. Why do they do it? They do it because that became their norm. Now, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is Christ Jesus. How does Jesus see you? He already sees you as glorified. When Jesus looks at you, even when you're a believer, even when you're commit, even when you're smoking that cigarette, even when you're fornicating, Jesus isn't looking at you that way. He's looking at you as glorified. He's looking at you as a destiny because he already paid the, the debt for your sin. That's a hard concept for some people to get. If we could see ourselves the way that he sees us. So how does he see us? He sees us as heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. He sees us knowing that the same spirit as born-again believers, every, every, every born-again believer, not just those believers who have been in church for 20 or 40 years, not just those believers who, who think that they have it all together, every believer, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you. Do you realize you have resurrection power in you? The Bible says, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. And the devil, the enemy, his minions have tripped some of you up. And you have yet to renew your, you have yet to, to see yourselves the way that Christ sees you. And part of that is you've got to set yourself apart from those things that you know, you know it, you know it. I know the greatest time that I'm going to overeat is when everybody else is asleep in that house and I'm sitting with my word. Isn't that terrible? I'm sitting with the word and gluttony. I will sit there, I can eat a whole bag of chips and a half gallon of ice cream in one sitting if I were so given. That's not right. I have to watch those things and not do that, and and know that, but, but I know, I know, if I sit on that couch, and with my German Shepherd, 
you know what? I literally have moved over to a different chair. I don't know what it is, but I was just breaking the pattern. And you know what? The past few nights, I haven't, and I don't, I use that as an illustration. There have been times in my life I have done that, but I don't typically do that. But that's the time that I'm tempted to do that. Do you see what I'm saying? You know those times. If you assess your day and when you fall prey to the old patterns, praise God, you're redeemed from them. But you have to renew your mind and you have to set yourself apart for his glory. Your spirit, you're a new person in Christ Jesus. Now, let's start living like it. Why? Not for our salvation. We're already saved. But because we love God and we want to bring glory and honor to him and we want to be effective in these final moments of the end of days. I pray that this helps those of you who are struggling Particularly, you, you just, I see it in your comments. You're worried if you're even worthy. You're worthy because of the blood of the Lamb. Jesus loved you so much that he, he says you're worthy because you believed on him. The thief on the cross believed on Jesus, and Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise. He was declaring him worthy to receive everlasting life. Oh, my brothers and sisters. He loves, you know what? I'm going to preach myself happy here. He loves us so much. He loves us so much. It's, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. There's a worship song by Zach Neese. I'm not going to sing it because it's probably copyrighted. I'm not going to play it. It's called The More I Seek You. I have a really good friend, uh, Gina, J-E-A-N-N-A, -N -N Campo, C-A-M-P-O. Gina, if you're listening to this, I, I just want you to know I'm giving you a plug here. Her, hold on just a second, brothers and sisters. I got to show you this because this is good. You can find her online. I believe she now has a second album out. Can you see that? That, I know there's a shadow on there. That's my dear, dear sister in the Lord, Gina. She came here with her pastor, Kathy McBride, who uh, they ministered. Gina ministered. Kathy has a powerful testimony. Gina ministered. What a gift of music. And she has on YouTube, she has The More I Seek You. Oh, listen to that song. I, I want to give you that tonight. Well, I just want to, again, God loves you. I love you. Have an awesome rest of your day.